Hello, welcome to this tutorial where I talk about how to make this animation. First, I draw the following elements using Clip Studio and I save them as PNG files. For the illusion of movement on the tires, I prepared three sets of tires. When you open Clip Studio Paint, you select new file. You want to go to the top where the animation icon is highlighted. Centimeters is my unit of choice and I'm using an output of 19 by 12. I am going to be moving things in and out of the screen so I'm using an overflow frame of 8 by 15. This animation is in 24 frames per second. Time to hit OK. When you start your animation, make sure your timeline is displayed. Go to Windows Timeline or Window X. By default, you start with one empty animation folder. Let's start adding elements to it. I go to Import, Image, and select the folder where I have the sky. Now the sky is in the animation folder, but I don't see it anywhere on the timeline. To see it, I need to tell the timeline what's going to happen in each cell. And for that, we use the Specify Cells function located here. You see every element inside the animation folder. Now I click sky and voila, I see it in the timeline and most important, I see it on display. Now I'm gonna resize the sky. This element is gonna remain static throughout the video. So I'm just gonna rename the animation folder and we're gonna move on. This is the new animation folder icon. It creates a completely independent uh, space and we're going to use it to animate the mountains. We want to have different animation folders because each element is going to move independent from each other. Create a folder and then add the element that is going to be part of the animation. As before, we go to the beginning of the timeline and specify the cells. We're going to resize the element but in this occasion we're going to use the entire screen and then we're going to move it to the edge of the visualizing frame. Now we get to the part where we talk about keyframing. A keyframe is a reference point in your timeline. You want to use a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of a sequence but first you have to enable keyframing using this button. You go to the place in your timeline where you want to start your sequence. You add a keyframe using this button and it records the position of your element. Now you're going to go to the place where you want to end the sequence and you add another keyframe at that point. You're going to move your element and that's going to be the position on the second uh, keyframe. The beauty of using keyframes is that you don't have to specify each individual cell. You mark the beginning at the end of the sequence and the computer does the rest. Now it's time to animate the trees. Because the trees move independently from the mountains, we're going to create a new animation folder. As before, we add the elements from the appropriate folder, we specify the cells, and then we resize it to the, to the entire screen. And we're going to place the trees at the beginning, at the edge of the frame. Here again, we enable keyframes, we go to the beginning of the sequence and add a keyframe. Then we go to the end of the sequence and add another keyframe and we move the element to the desired position. Remember that this part, this element is going to move faster than the mountain, so we want to move it a little bit more. We're going to repeat this process once more this time for the clouds. So remember to create an animation folder, add the element to animate, specify the cell, resize the clouds to the full size of the screen, enable keyframes, add a keyframe at the beginning at the end of the sequence, and because we're dealing with clouds, remember that they don't move much when compared to the other elements. In this section, we're gonna see how the perception of motion is achieved by changing your image just a little bit frame by frame. It's now time to animate the car. We create a new animation folder, add the element, specify the cells, and resize the car. Now we need the tires. Again, we go to the folder and add the appropriate element, resize the tires, and voila, we have a moving car. 
Only the car is not really moving, the background is moving and that gives us the illusion of movement. But we want to make the car move. When you specify cells, the value continues until you specify something different in that cell. So what we want to do is do something different. We're going to duplicate the existing uh, folder and we're going to delete the first set of tires. Then we're going to specify the new folder and we're going to add the new set of tires that are slightly different than the previous one. At this moment, you want to turn on your onion skin. The onion skin shows you what you have on your previous frame and allows you to fine tune the movement on your next frame. We're going to do the process three times because we have three sets of tires. We specified folder number three. We adjust uh, the three tires. And these three folders are all we need to animate the tires. I'm gonna go to frame number eight on the timeline and I'm gonna specify a folder number one. Then to frames to the right, I'm gonna specify number two, to frames to the right, number three, and so on. We continue with this process until we get to about frame number 25 and this is how it looks so far. Because our car got to a bump, we're gonna make our car jump. We're going to start by duplicating folder 1 and we're going to change the name because we're initiating a new sequence. Now we specify that new folder that we created and we name B1. Right click the cell you want to specify and type or select the folder. This is another way of specifying cells. Go to the folder you just created and select both images inside the folder. We're going to merge them. This is going to make them easier to manipulate. Right click the selected layers and merge them. Pick the selection area tool, select the entire object and select the scale rotate tool. It is the fourth icon from the right. You'll see a cross at the center of the area. That's your rotation axis. You want to move it to the tire and then you can start manipulating the object. Then deselect. Make sure your onion skin is on. We're going to repeat the process now starting with folder number two. We're going to duplicate the folder, rename it as B2 and place it at the top of the sequence. Now we're going to specify the cell, open the folder and merge the two images inside. Now we're going to select our entire object, move the center uh, of the square to the tire and start manipulating the object. We're going to start the process once again, but this time we're going to start with folder number 3. So, we duplicate the object, rename it as B3, and place it on top. Now we specify the cell, merge the images, and do the sequence to manipulate the object. For the part of the jump where the car is in the air, we don't need to go back to folders 1, 2, and 3. We're going to choose B3 as our starting point. I've decided that the wheels are not going to move while they are in the air. That's probably inaccurate, but it looks good. So we're going to duplicate B3 and we're just going to move the object slightly. And then we repeat the process. We duplicate the folder that we created, so B4, and then we just keep moving it slightly. Keeping your onion skins on, it's going to make this process easier. At about frame 45, our car hits the ground. At that moment, we want to make the wheels move again, but we don't need to keep duplicating um, folders. What we can do is we're going to use folders 1, 2, and 3 and just specify the cells. At some point in your animation, the background stops, but you want your car to keep moving. What we're going to do is a sequence similar to the jumping sequence. We're going to start with folder 1, duplicate it and rename it as E1 because it's a new sequence. We select the layers and merge them. Then we specify the cell and select the object that we're going to animate and move it slightly to the right. 
how far to the right, it depends how fast you want the car to move. Folder 2 has the second set of tires, the tires that we need for our next frame. So we're gonna leverage this folder, we're gonna duplicate it and name it as E2. Then we merge the uh, layers inside and specify the cell. Now it's time to move the car a little bit more to the right. So as you imagine, now we're gonna do it with folder number three. And so on until our car leaves the screen. For the last frame, there are two things that you can do. You can either specify a folder with nothing in it or you can specify a folder that doesn't exist. That's what I did. And this is our animation. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. Take care.